Okay, who has questions? Anyone? Okay, if there aren't any questions, I'm gonna do some problems starting with number 28. Uh, we've done problems up to 28 in some previous Q and A's. So here we go. I'm gonna change my share so that hopefully you can see number 28. So these types of problems we're doing right now uh, can be classified kind of two ways. One is um, uh, determination. of the formula of a compound. And it could be empirical formula, it could be um, molecular formula. And the determine, determination of purity of a compound in a mixture. Almost always when we do the determination of uh, purity of a compound in a mixture, it's by mass percent. And you determine the mass percent by taking the mass of the compound in your mixture and dividing it by the mass of the mixture times 100%. And this is basically that formula where percent is part over whole times 100%. The mass of the compound in the mixture is the part. The whole is the mixture itself. Okay. So let's take a look at this uh, problem here. At higher temperatures, uh, sodium bicarbonate is converted quantitatively to sodium carbonate. Now quantitatively means all of it. So here we have this bounce reaction with two sodium bicarbonates react to give you one sodium carbonate, one CO2 and one H2O. And it says heating a 1.71 eight four gram sample of impure sodium bicarbonate gives 0.196 grams of CO2. What was the mass percent sodium bicarbonate in the original 1.714 gram sample? So the question is asking, what is the mass percent? So that's gonna be the mass of sodium bicarbonate over the mass of the sample. And we already know the sample's impure because it says so right here. So this is what we start with. And we already know that the mass of the sample is 1.7184 grams. So all we have to do is figure out the mass of sodium bicarbonate. And I have the feeling that it has something to do with this up above. So they give us 0.196 grams of CO2. Could we use that to figure out the mass of sodium bicarbonate? And I would say, yeah. We could take the grams of CO2, turn that into moles of CO2, turn that into moles of sodium bicarbonate, and then turn that into grams of sodium bicarbonate. And then we could use that number up above and solve the problem. Now there is an assumption we have to make. So here's the sample. 
which weighs 1.7184 grams. I'm gonna say this is the sodium bicarbonate stuff, and this is the other stuff. When we heat it, the sodium bicarbonate turns into sodium carbonate, plus CO2 gas and plus H2O gas. So my imagining is that whatever happens to this, the CO2 and the H2O, because they are gases, they leave the solid, okay? And we have 0.196 grams of CO2. Now we do have to make one assumption and that is the other, when you heat it, nothing happens to it. So all of the CO2, all of it comes from the sodium bicarbonate. If we make that assumption, we can do this problem. Okay, so we start off with our 0.196 grams of CO2, multiply by one mole of CO2. So I'm doing this right here for 44.01 grams of CO2. From our balanced reaction, we have two moles of sodium bicarbonate, for one mole of CO2. Tony, can then, you uh, um, paper up a little bit higher? Yeah. Thank you. How's that? That's good. I just need to be able to see the uh, reaction. So maybe I'll just do this. That way we can still see the reaction and everything down below. Thank you. Now the molar mass of this stuff is uh, 22.98, I believe, for sodium. Nope, 22.99 for sodium. 1.01 uh, .01 for hydrogen for a total of, uh, let's see, 22.99, 23, 24.0. And 24.0 plus 12 is 36.0. 36 point, or 36.01, I'm sorry. And 36.01 plus 48 is uh, 84. 0 0.01 grams of sodium bicarbonate to one mole of sodium bicarbonate. So if we estimate the answer, we have 44 goes into 84 twice. Two times two is four and four times 0.2 is around 0 0.8. It's gotta be less than 0 0.8 though, because 44 does not go into 84 twice and 0.196 is not 0 0.2. So I'm gonna move this on up now. And let's see what we get here. 0.196 times two times 84.01 divided by 44.01. And I get 0 0.748 grams of sodium bicarbonate. Now, are we done? And the answer is no, we have to do this up here. So the mass percent is going to equal 0 0.748 grams of sodium bicarbonate in 1.7184 grams of a sample times 100%. And so I get 43.5%. So this is the kind of work I would expect to see for this problem. But remember, it started with the question. 
The question being, what is the mass percent? So we wrote that formula out. Okay, so I'm feeling sluggish tonight, so you're gonna have to help me out by giving me the yes or no. Are there any questions here? Then we shall proceed. Okay. Now, this one here is a combustion reaction, and we're going to find the empirical formula of acetylene. In a combustion reaction, a hydrocarbon, so this is a hydrocarbon, hydrogen and carbon, hydrocarbon, a hydrocarbon reacts with oxygen to give you CO2 and H2O. So you want to memorize these products. Every carbon in the hydrocarbon becomes a carbon in CO2. Every hydrogen in the hydrocarbon becomes a hydrogen in H2O. And we use that to figure out the formula. So the steps to doing this are, number one, take your grams of CO2, turn that into moles of CO2, and turn that into moles of carbon, because that's gonna be the moles of carbon in your formula here. And take your grams of H2O, turn that into moles of H2O, and turn that into moles of hydrogen, because that'll be the moles of hydrogen in your formula there. And once you have these two numbers, you just do uh, uh, what we did before for formulas where we're trying to figure out the uh, uh, molecular formula. So let's take a look here. We're gonna take our 0.379 grams of CO2 times one mole of CO2 per 44.01 grams of CO2. And if I have one mole of CO2, how many moles of carbon do we have? And the answer is it's right there in the formula if I have one mole of that, I have one mole of carbon and two mole of oxygen. Well, I'm not interested in the oxygen. I'm interested in the carbon. So this will give us the moles of carbon in our mesetylene. So I'm going to make that dot kind of stand out a little bit. So 0 0.379 divided by 44. And I know the answer should be 0 0.00 something maybe eight or nine, I'm not sure. And clearly I got the wrong answer because I got 0.86. And there's no way in the world the answer can be 0.86. This 0.86 is close to one. So now I did this again and I got 0.8612 moles of carbon. And really this is only good to that one there. So we take our 0 0.1035 grams of H2O, multiply by one mole of H2O, per 18.02 grams of H2O. And then here, for every one mole of H2O, we have two moles of hydrogen. Okay, when I do this, two will go into 18 about 10 times. This divided by 10 should be 0.01. So let's see what we get, 0 0.1035 times two divided by 18.02. And we get 0 0.01149 mole of hydrogen. Where and that's you, good to the nine. Where did you get the two moles of hydrogen from? From the formula. 
If I have H2O and I have one mole of that. Oh, okay. Now you got two hydrogen. Okay. I got two hydrogen. So yeah, two moles. Makes... So it's right from the formula. Okay. So now I like to do this. I'm going to move the paper up. I like to take C 0 0.008612, H 0 0.001149. So I take the moles and I use it as a subscript and we know we can't have fractional subscripts. So how do we deal with this? We divide each of these by the smallest number. So what's smaller, 0 0.001149? And actually, do you see how I wrote that down incorrectly? Don't do that. So I have 0, 0.0, and I'm going to rewrite this just so that we can see it very clearly. 0, 0, 008612 hydrogen 0 0.01149. Okay, so I made sure I got those transferred correctly. So I want to divide by the smaller of these two numbers, and that's going to be 0 0.008612. And I get carbon one hydrogen one point three 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 eight da 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 da. Now we can't have a empirical formula that has a fraction as a subscript, so we need to get rid of that. And the way to get rid of that is to multiply by some number both subscripts by some number to get rid of that. And by meaning get rid of that, I mean multiply by some number so that ends up being a whole number. What number do you want to multiply this by? Well, I'm thinking C1 H1.3338, I'm going to multiply by three because three times that should give me four. And it does. So I get C3H4 for my answer. I actually get 4.0015, which I think is close enough to four to call it four. And this is the empirical formula. So this is the work I would expect to see for this one. Okay, so help me out. Are there any questions on this? Now, does anyone have any idea where students usually make a mistake on this. Any ideas? Uh, maybe dividing by the bigger number or something? No, we're going to find out now. <laughs> yeah, just kind of left it hanging there, didn't I? Okay, <laughs> so here we have another hydrocarbon burned in oxygen, and we get 0.364 grams of CO2 and 0 0.0596 grams of H2O. What's the empirical formula of azulene? Go. Remember, we want moles of carbon and we want moles of hydrogen. So I'm going to let you work on this for a little while. And when you think you have the empirical formula, Give me a thumbs up so I know that I should continue. And right now I'm going to pause the recording. Okay, so as you can see from our problem, we take the uh, 0.364 grams of CO2 and calculate the moles of CO2. We take the 0 0.0596 grams of H2O 
and calculate the moles of H2O. And I always like to set it up with the numbers we get here as subscripts, divide by the smallest subscript, and this is what we get. And one of you said that, well, that is one and one fourth. And that's right, that is one and one fourth. And that's a good way to think about this because if it's one and one fourth, you multiply by four. Whereas the previous problem, we had one and one third, so you multiply by three. So if we multiply by four, we get C5H4 and that's the empirical formula. Then we had to figure out the molecular formula. And remember to get the molecular formula, you take the molar mass of the molecular formula and divide it by the molar mass of the empirical formula to get a multiplier. So here we had 128.2 grams per mole for the molecular formula, which is given. And this here, the molar mass is 64 to, one, uh, to the ones. Uh, I didn't do any more work than that because normally you don't need to. This goes into this almost exactly two times. And so that's our multiplier. So C5H4 with a multiplier of two becomes C10, two times five, and H8, two times four for the molecular formula. And what I have squared off here is what we would expect for your answer. Now for this problem here, it's similar to the, uh, oh, that's the one we just did. For this next problem, you can see that it's a similar combustion problem. However, in this particular compound, there is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So we have to figure out the moles of three things carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So we can go ahead and take the 0 0.3716 grams of CO2 and get the moles of carbon. We can take the 0.1522 grams of H2O and get the moles of hydrogen. But how do we get the moles of oxygen? And the answer is, well, it's a little more complicated because of the following. So let's take a look here. We could take the CO2 and calculate the moles of oxygen. We could take the H2O and calculate the moles of oxygen here and add them together, but that would not be the moles of oxygen in this compound because there are some moles that come from, ox from the uh, oxygen that it reacts with. Okay, so what do we do? Well, to get the moles of oxygen, you actually have to take, use this idea here, that the grams of carbon in your unknown compound, plus the grams of hydrogen in your unknown compound, plus the grams of oxygen in your unknown compound equal the mass of the unknown compound. So that means if you take the mass of the unknown compound and subtract the grams of carbon and the grams of hydrogen, you can get the grams of oxygen and from that, you can get the moles of oxygen. So how do you get the uh, grams of carbon in your compound? Well, you take your moles of carbon and get the grams of carbon. And you take your moles of hydrogen and get your grams of hydrogen. So if we take a look at the work here, here's the 0.718 grams of CO2 converted into moles of carbon. Here's your 0.1522 grams of H2O converted into moles of hydrogen. Here's your moles of carbon converted into grams of carbon. Here's your moles of hydrogen converted into grams of hydrogen. So to get the grams of oxygen, that almost looks like grams of zero, doesn't it? So here's your grams of oxygen. You take the grams of your compound minus the grams of carbon minus the grams of hydrogen to get your grams of oxygen. Then you take your grams of oxygen, convert it into moles of oxygen, and do another one of these things where we take the moles and use them as subscripts. And in this case, our empirical formula ends up being C4H8O. And then 
we did have to calculate the molecular formula and that's where we had left off. So let's look at the molecular formula. I got to do something real quick because something's bothering me. There. Okay, so we know that the empirical formula is C4 H eight O. Now, the molar mass of our empirical formula is equal to 48 plus eight for 56 plus 16 for 72. And we're told that the molar mass of the molecular formula is 72 grams per mole. So we can see that if we take this number divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula, we get a multiplier of one. So that means that the molecular formula equals the empirical formula. So I want you to recall that the empirical formula is simply the simplest ratio of elements in a compound. The molecular formula is the true ratio of elements. So for instance, if we have this molecule right here, the molecular formula is CH40 or O, and the empirical formula is CH40. They are the same. If we have this compound, the molecular formula is C2H6, and the empirical formula is CH3. So in some compounds, the formulas are the same. In other compounds, they are different. Are there any questions about this one? Okay. We're going to move on. And our next one here is uh, finding the empirical formula of this iron carbon monoxide complex. So, what they do with this complex is they combust it with oxygen to give iron three oxide and CO2. Okay. I'm not going to try to balance this, but I want you to understand that for trying to figure out this formula to get X, and I'm going to put that in quotes, to get X, we take the grams of iron three oxide, we get the moles of iron three oxide, and then from that, we get the moles of iron. And to get Y right here, you take the grams of CO2, get the moles of CO2, get the moles of carbon. And when you have the moles of carbon, you can use that to get the moles of carbon monoxide. 
So once you get this X and this Y, you can do what we have done before, which is to say, use these as subscripts and then work it out from there. So let's take a look at this. Whoops, I need to move this down a little bit so I can read my masses. So we obtained 0.799 grams of iron three oxide. And I'm gonna multiply by one mole of iron three oxide times, I wanna say 159.70 grams of iron three oxide. But I'm gonna do a double check real quick. I know that iron is 55.85. I know oxygen is 16 and I get 159.70. Now, how many moles of iron are there for one mole of iron three oxide? And it looks like there's two, two moles of iron. Okay, so this is gonna be our X, so to speak. So 0 0.799 times two, and that'll give us a like 1.6, right? And 1.6 divided by 159 is like saying one divided by 100, which should be 0 Okay, divided by 159.70. And I get uh, 0 0.0100. 0, 0. And it looks like I get three zig figs, but I'm gonna carry an extra long. Moles of iron. And now we take our 2.200 um, grams of CO2. times one mole of CO2 per 44.01 grams of CO2 times one mole of carbon per one mole of CO2 and times one mole of CO per one mole of carbon. Okay. So I get point zero. Five zero zero. Actually, if I get four significant figures here, I get point zero four nine 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 mole of CO. So I'm going to do the iron zero point zero one zero zero one. CO 0 0.04999. And I'm going to divide each of these by 0 0.0101. Actually, I think I said that incorrectly. I'm going to divide each of these by 0 0.0001. Clearly, this one is going to become FE1. And I think it's pretty clear that this one's gonna become five. And this is the kind of work I would expect to see on your exam. Does anyone have a question about this one here? Any questions? So yes or no? Any questions, Melissa? Rebecca, you have a question. You've raised your hand. Uh, yeah, I was just letting you know that I have to go, but thank you so much. 
Okay, have a good evening. All right, you too. Bye. Bye bye. All right, so we're going to go ahead and look at the next problem. So this next problem has to do with concentrations. And they're talking about the molar concentration. This is going to be the last problem we do tonight. So there is a concentration that is called molarity. So I'm going to give you an example of a molarity concentration. You can have a 0.500 molarity sodium hydroxide solution. So there are other ways of writing this. The most common way of writing this is as follows. 0.500 M NaOH where M and molarity are the same thing. Now, when you actually read this, you would say 0 0.500. Zero, zero. I know you're wondering, why is he writing all of this out? And you're going to see why in just a second. So 0 0.500 zero, zero molar sodium hydroxide. Now we know that it's a solution because of this M here. So we use this word molar kind of as an abbreviation for molarity, only it's like a nickname. We don't wanna say the whole word molarity, so we say molar, just like we don't wanna say the whole name Anthony, so we say Tony. So Tony and Anthony are the same thing and molar and molarity are the same thing. Is everyone okay with that? Okay, something you wanna get used to. All right, so what does this actually mean? This means 0 0.500 moles of sodium hydroxide per one liter of solution. That's what that means. So if you ever have to use one of these in a calculation, you don't want to leave it like this. You put it like this. Do not, do not do this. These are not the same thing. This, in fact, is equal to that. And you can see these two things are not the same thing because here you've got per liter of solution, per liter of solution. So do not do this. So I'm going to put a big box around this. And then I'm going to put a line through it. And that means no, don't do it. And it's not like a dare, like, okay, don't do it. I dare you. This is a don't do it because it's wrong. All right. So to determine molarity, to determine molarity, so I'm going to put question mark molarity you take the moles of solute and divide it by the liters of solution. We'll call that X and Y, and you get the molarity. So these words, solute and solution. So, these ions are in water. Water is the solvent. The things that are dissolved in the water are called the solute. 
and the whole kit and caboodle is called the solution. Okay, so again, the whole kit and caboodle is called the solution, and the solution is made out of the solvent and the solute. The solute is surrounded by the solvent. The solvent surrounds the solute. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem in more detail. So the formula is potassium dichromate, and we have 2.335 grams of potassium dichromate. And we need to turn that into moles of potassium dichromate. So one mole of potassium dichromate. Uh, I'm not going to bother calculating this. I'm just going to Google it and get the molar mass. So I'm typing in molar mass, K2Cr2O7, and I get 294.185. I'm going to call it 0.19 grams. Okay, so that's the molar mass of potassium dichromate. And let's see what we get for the moles. 2.335. I always do this. Uh, you might be wondering, what does he always do? I always use my calculator without turning it on. Turns out it doesn't work if you don't turn it on. Okay, and I get 0 0.007937 moles of potassium dichromate. Now we have 500 milliliters of solution. So I'm going to take that 500 milliliters and I'm going to multiply by one liter of solution per 1,000 milliliters of solution. And that gets me 0 0.500 liters of solution. So I'm gonna take these two numbers to get the molarity. And when I divide this by 0.5, I get 0 0.01, and I'll get three significant figures because of that, 5, 9. And I can write moles of K2Cr2O7 per one liter of solution. But a more common way to write it is as follows. Point zero one nine five molar K two Cr two O seven. This is the preferred way of writing it. So to do this problem, this is the work I would expect to see to get the molarity of the solution. Now, it asks you, what are the molar concentrations of K plus and Cr2O2 ions? Well, for that, we have to know that one mole of K2Cr2O7 is equal to two mole of potassium, which is also equal to one mole of Cr2O7. So how do I know it's one mole? Well, because when I look at this formula, there's two potassiums 
and there's one dichromate. So that's how I know there's one mole for one mole of that, but also how I know that there's two moles of potassium per one mole of that. So if they want the molarity of potassium, we can take this number here, 0 0.0159 mole of K2Cr2O7 per one liter of solution and multiply by two mole of potassium per one mole of K2Cr2O7. And you can see we're gonna be left with moles of potassium per liter of solution, which gives us 0 0.0317, when I double that, molar potassium. So notice if I have moles per liter, I'm just gonna write molar. And I'm gonna show you kind of a, a trick that works really well. So here we can actually take this molar solution and we can multiply by one molar Cr2O7 to one molar K2Cr2O7. And we would get here 0 0.0159 molar Cr2O7. So something along the lines of this would be expected for the work to get the molarity of the ions in solution. Are there any questions about this particular problem? Now's the time to ask them, or you don't have to forever hold your peace. You can ask again at another session. So think about this problem. Try to do some problems like this in the book and see how that works out for you. And tomorrow I'll be talking about the lab that we'll be doing, which is a titration of vinegar and it might be with sodium bicarbonate. It might be with sodium hydroxide. I'm not sure. I have to work that out tonight. Does anyone have any questions right now? Okay, well, we're at the end of the session. So now's the time to turn on your mics and say good night. Later, Tony. Good night, Greg. Good night, China. Or is it on your dog? I'm not sure which. Maybe it's both of you. Good night, Melissa. Toodles. Are you recording this? I believe I am. I see that must, that was probably a chat from earlier, wasn't it?